Eight o'clock on a Thursday morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Another nice day in Asakusa. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, okay. The regular crowd is here. Let's go. I think it's going to be a sunny day here. It's really been mixed this week. It's really, really cold compared to what it was a few weeks ago. Nothing compared to whatever in Ed Edmonton or, or whatever. The American friends are having this polar vortex or something these days. But it is cold. It's sort of, it's normal cold for us right now. So no complaint whatsoever. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Should be a nice day here. I'm happy. <laughs> Just I've had my lists and I've been killing it the last few days. The fact that we're in end of January, this is our, our slump time. Slump is not the right word to use for it. Slump means you're, you're performing poorly or something. Just simply there's fewer people around. You know, this is the, the, the quietest time of our, of our uh, visitor year. So all of us, everybody here is catching up on stuff, the stuff that's been all over our desks, you know. So we're still busy, 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 of course, but we're, we're killing stuff and cleaning things up. March, I don't even want to think about March, but right now, January, February. Someone says, is Taran taking over the stream while I'm away? No, he doesn't want that stress. And, uh, you know, for me, it's not stress. I just sit here and chat with you guys. I'm used to this now. I've been doing this for seven years. But for Taran San, that would be a huge obligation and a stress. And uh, he's busy. He is busy. He's carving stuff. He's tracing and carving one of the upcoming Hokusai prints. He started the tracing work, research and tracing work on a large project that's too soon to announce, but he will be doing a video about it, the same as he did for his Yoshida print last year. A project like that is now underway. And then he's doing another work. He's working on the, the Eight Views of Cats number four. He is helping me work on the color separations for Eight Views of Cats number four. Taran-san is a busy camper, so let's not bother him. Okay, what's happening today? Last, last we talked on Monday, I was doing uh, uh, carving adjustments on the blue block for the surfer girl. That is still right here on my table. And if all goes well, well, we might get to it today. We have been bumped as usual by something else. First, a white package, chocolate eggs to whoever knows what's inside. What's this? Oh, I can't talk about that on stream bunch of numbers. Chickenmeister, of course, has it. Chickenmeister gets a gold-plated chocolate egg this morning. It's kubota prints that need embossing. Could you tell me which print is inside? That's a, that's a bridge too far. There indeed, Kubota gets. It's this one. We're going back in time. This is 2012. This is the third print that we published in the Ukiyo Heroes series. And they are still, still, still going well. They're going to be going well long after I'm gone. That's a funny feeling, you know. I'm laughing while I say this, but it really is a funny feeling. These prints will be popular, obviously, for generations to come. These characters are not going away. The characters that we've parodied here, characters are not going away. Younger people are being born all the time, coming on the internet, seeing these things, saying, oh my God, I want to have one of these. This is going to be continuing long after I'm gone. How many people can actually say that, I guess? I don't know. I really don't know. Most of us do our jobs. And when we leave, somebody else comes in, sits in the chair and does the job, you know. Very, very funny feeling. For Jed, it must be more intense. You know, Jed created the thing. I mean, the prints, but Jed created the concept. And then going back even farther, Miyamoto-san, the guy at Nintendo, of course, who created the characters in the first place. What does he think about all this? My God. Yeah, 
Is there any doubt as to what we're going to see when we open a package of prints from Kubota? My God. <sighs> what to look for? I mean, this, again, there's no doubt for me, but if you were opening and inspecting a package of prints like this, what you can look for is first, and I'll flip through them and see how much consistency there is. Like whatever, just grab something, that orange, does it stay consistent through the batch from front to back? The, where the gradation comes, how far up the green comes, how far up the darker gradation comes, do they stay consistent? Because this is the difference between an okay printer and a really, really godlike character like kubota -san is the consistency from one to the next. That takes just decades of, of experience. Anybody can sort of learn to do this. I myself, I've made prints that are as attractive as this, but could I turn around a batch as big as this in the time frame that he's done it? Well, once upon a time I did, and I was doing that. These days, no, but uh, there it is. Absolutely. He's done it just so smooth. Also, I got to say, the sizing, the sizing is just perfect. We have got this. What's happening with the sizing here these days is I'm doing it for all the outside printers. So I can blah, blah, blah. I did the sizing for this group of paper. Kubota-san, of course, don't and doesn't know how to do this. The sizing for our inside printers, Ishikao-san, Dei-chan, Aimi-san, they now do it themselves. And yesterday, Ishikao-san stood there. On the, she's got a little stand to do it on. And she did her own sizing. They're not really, really happy about doing this, but they are happy that they are developing better skill sets. Question here, are there colors or shades that are harder to keep consistent? I don't think so. A quick, easy answer to that is no. If you can print it, you can, you know, if you can print it, you can print it. There are some gradations that are much more difficult than others. Whether a gradation, how deep it is, how far it fades out. He's done this in two colors. Oops, get on camera, Dave. He's done this gradation on the green here twice. Once coming up from the bottom and fading out over a long period, the green, and then once with a gray green at the bottom. The long fade is difficult, absolutely, the long fade. And that's difficult to keep consistent, but it's not what color it is or what shade. The, whatever, a long gradation is, is difficult. A short gradation like the one up at the top here. You got your brush, boom, 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 you go, you boom, 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 you go. But with a long gradation, it's more difficult. He's done such a good job of this. Okay, be quiet, be quiet. Let's get this done. Embossing, embossing. Okay, let me get set up. I've got my plate here, the embossing plate. We want a non-skid surface. Okay, the plan for today is this. As I said, I have the surfer girl work still on the bench here. We'll do this first. The other day I showed a video clip of some carving. And I told you that on that long neglected drive, we found a bunch of other video. So I'm going to show you today a couple more short video clips. That was about seven, eight, nine minutes long. These short video clips today, maybe about I don't know, one or two minutes each. And they're not carving, they're clips taken from my window over in Omi. So we'll have a little break halfway along, so maybe when I'm finished this. And look at a couple of very, very happy, very fun little clips. Let's see where this is going to go. It says here, Ukiyo Heroes, and to confirm it says Bo Kubota. I think we are right there. We're going to need a Baron. We... What's he done this? Yes, again, he has used Uda Baron. It's funny, before I send him the paper, you know, for each one of these prints, I press the paper. Before I took the trouble after doing the sizing and cutting, I pressed this paper one by one by one in our press. And I did that because the surface of Iwano-san's paper these days is kind of rough and it's a little bit difficult to get smooth colors on. So I pressed it before I sent it to him and I let him know. 
But even though I did this, he himself still did Udabaren. He got a blank piece of wood before he made the paper wet, and he took a very strong baron and he rubbed the entire surface of the paper on the back against a flat piece of wood to help calendar it. Even though I told him it was already calendared, he must have figured he wanted to get it just one more level up. <laughs> the paper is out. There's only one batch of paper out today. It's coming out for day chance. She's working steadily, chewing through our new version of John Amos's design called Milton. It's coming back into print. I checked with John whether we could do another edition of this. He said, cool, and he and A-chan have been sending some images back and forth. Double check, Dave. Hori Bull, I carved this. Sudi Kubota, Kubota-san printed this. So this is correct. Here we are. The famous embossing Hori Bull, Hori Bull, carving bull, printing Kubota, Sudi Kubota. Someone's talking about salt in tea. That was a thing in my news feed this morning as well. So I guess it's gone around the internet today, has it? Okay, well this is the setting good. All right, let's just roll. I think there's about 80 copies here. I'm not really sure. So the chat is now switched to a chat. Nothing to do with woodblock printmaking. It's now all about salt and tea and coffee. I think every, probably every stream on the internet this morning has picked up that theme. I don't know where it came from. I saw it in my news this morning. I actually didn't stop and read the story. I just saw the headline going through and thought, I'm not going to click on that one. <laughs> so I don't know the backstory here. All I know is that there is a thing this morning going around about salt and tea. Yeah. What you decide to click on, you know. I get I get a couple of news feeds. I've got a Google News page set up to send me various things, you know. And of course, as you click on something, the the algorithm that you're on the page that you're looking at thinks, okay, he wants to see more of this. And knowing about these algorithms really, really influences what I click on when I'm going through that news, you know. If that had been a physical newspaper I was looking at and the headline was something Brits and Americans salt in tea, I probably would actually have, have started reading it to see if it was going to hold my interest. But because it was on a news feed page, I reach out and thought, no, I'm not going to click that because if I do, now I'm going to get an endless feed for the next few days of nothing but stories about tea or something, you know. So it really affects what I'm willing to click on and look at. I have mixed feelings about these. I want the news feed to be, of course, customized to some extent. I don't want a random batch of stories. But over-customization is too much. It, you know you know how it works. It just turns everything into the echo chamber. You know. So I want a customized news feed with X percent of serendipity. I would like to have a serendipity control where I could boost it or reduce it, depending on how much random stuff was coming in. 
They don't seem to let us do that. And once you click it, they assume that's it. We've got another one. Send him everything we've got about that top. It seems to be all or nothing. So that's why I said the algorithm has benefits. Of course, of course. I, I don't want a completely random news feed every day. Of course not. I mean, I, and if that's how algorithms work, I'd be out of business because, of course, people click on something, something, Japan, something, something, they end up seeing one of our videos. So I get it. I would just like a bit less vigorous locking in and I would like a bit more serendipity. Or the option to click on something. Maybe if I did an option click that said, let me read this, but don't remember that I read this. And then if I click on a similar topic again, the thing says, okay, now he really is interested in this. So in other words, take a single click, ignore a single click on a topic. But if I've clicked a second or third time on something similar, then start to think about, I'm interested in this. But don't let a single click determine my algorithm for the next couple of days. Yeah, we see incognito mode, but but I do want a program feed. You know, as I said, I don't want a random feed. I do appreciate the benefits of these algorithms. That might be key. Just ignore a single click on a topic, or you know, register it so that it knows the future, but don't act on it. Everybody's talking about the same thing. We've all got the same complaint. You know? As you said, buy one Lego and that's it. For the next five years, that's all you see. Wouldn't that policy, though, do this? If we had that policy, don't recommend based on one view. Keep track of what I looked at. And if I look at something else similar, now you can start recommending me things. But just based on one click or one purchase or one view video, leave me alone. Other news is there today. Today's a Thursday. There wasn't. I, I didn't. I did make a memo, but it's not here. It's upstairs. Stuff I was supposed to mention. Went for my eye checkup on Tuesday, a couple of days ago. Three months. Three months. Three months. And then nothing special to report. There's no, uh, no, what sort? No dramatic degradation. In fact, this time round, I did you know, a visual field test with all the buttons and, and flashing lights and stuff. And uh, no uh, specific change month by month by month. Pressure inside the eyes is still not overly high. I can't say it's low, but it's not. Uh, any, any kind of emergency situation. So it's three more months of life with no specific degradation.
and the hospital where I go to is uh, is doing rotations. I guess they have doctors and staff and various things. People. It's a national hospital. It's not private. It's a, a national hospital, and things rotate. And I had this before when I had a procedure done there years and years and years ago. Same thing. The first doctor, and the next time you go, the doctor disappears. What's going wrong? Well, it's it's April. We've done a rotation of staff. Your previous doctor is gone, and now you're the other person I'm going to be seeing. So my eye doctor, the guy, the doctor there who has been investigating me, he's come to the end of his three-year shift here. So this is January. He will be leaving at the end of March, and new staff comes in in April. So next time I go there... It's January, three months, February, March, April, the middle of April. It'll be a different doctor. It's all the same data, but whatever. So in that case, I think this is a new news is good news situation. There's another one coming up. Do it. I can't. I should be careful about teasing and talking. Three months after that, in July, John... Becker knows what I'm talking about here. I was at the hospital there in 2017. And this July, John knows what I'm talking about here. We can talk about that come July. Japanese have an interesting word for it. Sotsugyo. And if all goes well, July for me is Sotsugyo. Talk about it in July. Those who've just come in here, coming in late, we're embossing this morning. It won't take too much longer, another 10 minutes maybe. We're embossing the carver's name, and again, the same thing to repeat. This is the kanji for hori, carving, and that's my name, buru. Then the kanji for suri, printing, and the name of our printer, kubota kenichi. So it's hori buru suri kubota kenichi. These are the craftsmen who made this print. Enjoying this print. He has done such a good job. I know this is a tape recording. I just keep saying the same thing. The colors are so smooth. The back is so smooth. The guy himself must just be enjoying this so much. When you do your printing and you pull it up and the wet paper comes off the block and you flip it over. And these are dry, so it looks okay. But when it's moist for printing, the colors always have a bit more saturation and a bit more richness. It's like, uh, whatever, if, you've, if my blue jeans here are dry, but if you make part of your blue jeans wet, never mind how, they get to be a richer, deeper blue. I mean, that's the way colors and things work. So when we print these, it's sometimes difficult. The paper is wet. It looks really rich. And when we dry it out, oh, it looks boring and flat in comparison. So he's the one who gets the real deep pleasure to see this every time as the colors build up and build up. My God, he is so good at this. And this there's a... Whatever. He's like 76 or something. <laughs> it's not going to last for much longer.
Enjoy it while you got it. Enjoy it while you got it. Someone's talking about the Japanese train system and how wonderful it is. Actually, today's not the day to talk about that because the last couple of days there have been troubles. You know, there was an electrical fault at uh, one, on one of the Shinkansen lines just north of Tokyo the other day. And it kind of shut down a whole lot of trains for, uh, I guess, most of a day and perhaps more than one day. And there's been hundreds of thousands of people who have had their trips disrupted the last couple of days here in Japan on trains. I don't think it was snow, it was you know, an electrical fault. In fact, two, two guys, two of the maintenance guys, you, you, can, you can Google this up, it was all over the news here the other day. A cable fell onto the tracks, I guess, train stop, maintenance guys went out there and two of them got electrocuted. They sent, sent to hospital. It was quite a, quite a strange episode. So today's not the day to brag about Japanese wonderful trains because, uh, yeah, it was trouble yesterday. It's rare, of course. Overall, the system here is astonishingly stable. But we can't claim uh, perfection here. Oh yeah, there is another little news tidbit to mention. I, know. I knew there was something else. I'm sitting here thinking of something else I thought I could mention. Whatever. I got a lunch invitation today. I'll be out of here today at lunch. Very, very, very unusual for me. My lunch, normally I head to the 7-Eleven, grab a sandwich and a salad and sometimes soup, head back here and scoff it. But today, no convenience store lunch for me today. I'm going over to <laughs> up, upscale Tokyo, up to the west side of Tokyo. I have a I've been asked to join some, uh, how much to say about it, it's okay, I don't think it's private, you know. One of the companies that supports our business in the infrastructure side, an international company with whom we have dealings as part of our, our infrastructure here. I don't mean the building, I mean, you know, our business operations. I guess the, the, the Japanese branch, they're getting visited by the, the American, some people are coming from the American branch or the American office. And uh, the Japanese branch was looking for uh, somebody who could help. Whatever, we are using their services really well. The, this company would like to have more people using their service as well. And they've asked me to join them for lunch to help explain why I use their services, how I think they could be doing it better, and how they could grow in Japan, stuff like that. So I get lunch in a, in a really nice restaurant. And it's really funny. The way Japanese do this is so cool. If, you were, if you're a businessman in America or whatever, you got some people you invite for lunch, we're going to have a lunch meeting, talk about this and that. You do it. You invite them, bang, and whatever. You make your reservation. 
here, they've obviously, they've made a reservation. They know who they've invited. They've made a reservation for a bunch of people. In order to make things go really, really smoothly, a couple of things. They've asked me, what name do you want on your name card? So there's obviously going to be places organized on the table. That's already set. No random walk in the room, who's going to sit next to who, how's the power structure going to be, and all that kind of stuff. It's decided. So this was decided, okay, no problem. A while later, I get another email from the young lady who is very, very competently organizing this. I get another email from them. Uh, here's a link to the menu, a specially uh, adapted version of the menu. Please choose mm, 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 from the menu. <laughs> so, so I go to the menu. <laughs> this is so much. It was actually an attachment in the email. I go to the menu, no problem, but they want to get this organized well. I'm, I'm in admiration of the fact that it's going to be a very smooth, well-organized meeting. So I choose the salad and whatever, but I drop her back an email, whatever. And as I, after I sat back to her, I thought, wait a minute, that menu they showed me, and it's copied from the restaurant's menu, but it had no prices. So I guess that's fine. They're, they're, this is the way to do it. You don't want your guests to, to worry about this and choose something, you know, oh, I can't eat that because it's too expensive, whatever. So they had erased, erased the prices for the menu. It takes me back to a time I remember, you know, you'd, you'd, I don't even know if it, does it still work like this? Take a girl for a date back in whatever it was, 1971 or something, you go to a restaurant and the, wait, the waiter gives the guy the menu with prices and he gives the lady the menu that has no prices. You know, do they still do that? I have no idea. But I remember being in that world, 1970, this, When's the last time I actually went on a date like that with a lady? We're talking 1971 or two or something like this. I don't even remember. And menus for the lady had no prices. The staff must have two stacks of menus with no prices. It's probably illegal to do that now, but that's the way it used to work. I'm not making this up. Anyway, so whatever. The menu page they sent me had no prices. But I think this is a PDF, so I think i got to play games with this. So I go to Adobe Acrobat. I open it up. And yes, somebody in their office <laughs> has, what do you call it? They've redacted the prices. But they haven't redacted them. They've just covered them with little blank white pieces of, of blank paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just for fun. I mean, I've already sent my order in. But just for fun, I had a look at it. I moved the white pieces of paper. They were all on a separate layer inside the PDF. You just move it over, and I can see the prices. It turns out, turns out I selected the cheapest stuff on the menu. So whatever. Maybe that's a, an example of how, uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it's an example of. So. <laughs> I'm not you know, shooting at them at all. It, it's very respect. They're trying to make this a stress-free in thing. I'm a guest, so they want to make the guest's experience as, as uh, smooth as possible. <laughs> I'll be having a, a Caesar salad appetizer and a steak sandwich. And this is the first time... Oh my God, when's the last time I had a steak sandwich? <laughs> It'd be in like uh, Mr. Mike's in, in Salmon Arm or something like that back in British Columbia. I don't remember. Steak sandwich isn't a thing that, that you see here on menus, you know. Anyway, whoever in their office, whoever did the redactions on the PDF, I hope they're, they're, they don't have to do that on some uh, business stuff, you know, because it really wasn't redacted, so, you know, it doesn't matter, it's just a laugh here, I don't care, but uh, be careful when you're redacting a PDF, you know, the data may still be in there. Ah, I thought, I should have thought about that, as soon as I mentioned the word steak sandwich, a certain John Becker is going to pop up. But John, it's, it's somewhere north of you, right? You're Tennessee, is steak sandwich a big thing in Tennessee, or, or maybe John's from Philly, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> John, I've never had one, so I don't know. I don't know what to compare. I'm also confused. I thought you were talking to Philadelphia, talking about your cheese steak. Isn't that what you're talking about? Unless you've been to Philly, you've never had a cheese sandwich. If you had asked me, what's the thing for Philadelphia? It's cheese steak, or am I confusing that with something else? Is
Is that a different thing or is that the same thing? Or is cheese steak a steak, steak sandwich with cheese on top? I really don't know, I'm sorry. Never been to Tennessee, never been to Philadelphia either, sorry. Around it, Chicago any number of times, New York, New Jersey any number of times. Never been to Philadelphia, sorry. Or Washington. Kansas City, yes, that's about it for that part of America. Over the West Coast, different, but around that side, Kansas City, Chicago, lots of towns in and around Illinois and Indiana, musical instrument towns. Then New York, uh, Massachusetts, Boston, Vermont. Never been in Philadelphia. of the meeting and a part of the reason why they would have invited me is I think what the deal is it's me plus a few other Japanese companies who are major users of this company's product and the American team is coming over and in order to help the Japanese side discuss their business it's obviously I can speak English so this is why they've picked me to join this so as a as a power user of their products and a major customer of theirs I'm a, a good candidate for explaining the Japanese side of their business to the American people who are parachuting in here for this meeting. It should be fun. It should be good fun. You know. I don't, I'm not involved with businesses and business meetings and all that kind of stuff these days. And when I chatted with them, you know, I, I, the people who were inviting me, I chatted with them by, by uh, Skype yesterday. I said, you know, this is a pretty power up restaurant. You know, I got to tell you, I don't have a suit, you know, I got no tie. I don't have such things as a tie. He said, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. So whatever. And I will wear socks. I'm going to wear socks. I'm not that disrespectful. I don't have a suit. I don't have shoes. I will wear socks. Okay, we're almost done this. I think there's about 10 sheets left. What have been 838? So let's see what's going on. Oh, also, 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 show and tell. Show and tell. We have a massive show and tell today. We won't be able to get through it all. In fact, I won't even be able to open it on my desk. It's in front of me down there on the floor. We'll have to do this thing where we turn the camera around and watch me open it down there. And then I'll try and bring it back to the desk. It's a quite unusual item. It's prints. It's prints. It's not little prints. And it, they're normal size prints, but there are a whole bunch of them in the package. And there's no way I can open it up on top of this desk. So, uh, so it should be a fun show and tell. We can't get through all of it today, but we'll, we'll open it up and have a look. At it. And there's a hugely interesting backstory to this item that I don't know. <coughs> So it's going to be a little bit of detective work. Okay, now I've got to be careful going down to the bottom here because what Kubota-san does and what most of the printers do is they stack these up and if there are prints that are not so well made, they put them at the bottom. Uh, you saw the other day when we were opening a package from Chihara-san, she actually puts a yellow label that says Yare. Uh, defective. But Kabuta-san doesn't do anything, but if there are prints that are not quite so cool, or his first test prints, he will put them at the bottom. Now, he sometimes, here, look at this, he's, oh no, that's me. The X there, these two, when I sent him the batch of paper, uh, I, I did, uh, I got some creases when I was doing the sizing. So what I did was, I quickly scribbled an X on those two sheets and put them on top of his stack. And I knew what he would do. He would moisten them as normal, and he would put those two sheets on top of his stack. 
And in fact, he's done that. He's numbered them one, two. So we know with the first couple of prints, they're going to be perhaps the color's not right. He's still mixing the gradation. Where is it? The registration might be off. So he knew and I knew that these first two sheets were going to be totally disposable. And here they are at the bottom of his stack. Now, actually, they, they actually seem to have come out all right. Oh, no, no, there's a little bit of misregistration there. He's probably seen this and adjusted it. Yeah, look at that. The orange is coming in here a little tiny bit. So these are defective prints, and we knew they were going to be defective. And from the next one, if all went well, bingo, bingo. So that's it. So we can keep embossing all the way down, and we will ignore those last two sheets. Again, that's just another, another demonstration of just how good this guy is. Now, give me a couple of sheets to do my testing on. You're good to go. Bang. So he would appreciate that. Other than that, if I gave him, for example, just 100 sheets of paper, bang, he would feel like David wants 100 prints back. But the first one and the second one, you can't see the registration. You've got to test them. So he would very much appreciate it when I do put a couple of extra sheets in like that. He can use them safely. His conscience is clear. He knows that I'm not expecting to get, to get the back as prints. So he would have been a happy camper. After I do this embossing, I will count them. I will do the data entry in our management system. Yamada-san, our bookkeeper, will see that upstairs and he will make payment to Kubota-san probably later this afternoon. Every time this print comes up, I guess the same topic. Maybe somebody out there talked about this. I didn't notice it when the chat was going by. I can mention it, I guess. When we did publish this at first, back in 2012, as part of our first Kickstarter campaign, there was a bit of blowback from some people about Jed's design. There were people who expressed the idea of being very disappointed in Jed because he had made a major screw up with this design. I think we probably talk about this every time I put the print in front of you. Do you remember what it was? I know. This is of course a parody of the character Link in The Legend of Zelda. And he is, uh, that's it. at this point it's not really androgynous, it looks like a guy, so I can say he. Uh, the hair, I never saw a comment about the hair being black, but it was the sword. The point being somebody, uh, not just somebody, a number of people complained that a true samurai would never rest their sword on the ground like this. And the sword is just, you know, like whatever Jed, I think he may have even added it as an afterthought. I don't know how well, how much Jed carefully thought this through. But the criticism was that uh, a samurai, if you're parroting this as a samurai, you would not put the sword on the ground at all. I have no idea how much of this is true. You know, you read now and then about the Americans, you know, when they're folding up their flag and whatever, you can't let the flag touch the ground and stuff like that. So I guess maybe the same thing is true for a samurai with his sword. Well, it makes sense, I guess, if you're going to uh, try, you know, Jed was trying to catch a lot of the essence of what an ukiyo-e print looks like and take this character and move him back in time, <coughs> then you want to do this as well as you can. So that might, maybe can be counted as a mistake. Not such a tragedy.
The tool I'm using to do the embossing is the tool we call Baren, B-A-R-E-N. I can't open it and show you what's inside because that would destroy it at the moment. It's got a coil inside, a woven coil of bamboo fiber. And actually you can probably see, do you see the bumpiness? If this was brand new, you would see a smooth flat surface here. But because this has been used, you can see the shape of the coil inside. You can see, look, 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 the little bumps, and you can see it's in, it's in a coil. Round, 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 round. And it's those bumps that do the actual pressing. If this was a wood block with color, paper would go on, and the bumps would do the actual rubbing that would transfer the color into the paper. We don't see a lot of printing on these streams because printing is difficult to do when you're being interrupted. This kind of work I'm doing today, you can see it's easy. I can stop and start. When I'm carving, I can stop and start. But when a printer is printing, they really, really, really have to do it in an uninterrupted way. The moisture control, the timing, the rhythm, the concentration. So we don't see too much printing on these streams. Here's the last sheet. What's our time? 8.46. Halfway through. We're okay. something else. I said earlier that one of the things I have to do now is I've got to count these prints. I've got to send the result into our bookkeeping system so that Kubota Sand can get paid. How do we count these? Now, actually, I'm going to show you how we count them, but I'm a turkey at this. I am probably the worst person in this building because I don't actually do this every day. The printers upstairs at Chiharu-san and Kubota-san, my God, they can count this stuff in seconds. I'll go through it slowly here, but what you do is you get a batch of your paper. Maybe you're getting ready to make prints or you've finished your prints, whatever. You get your batch of paper. You crack it, squeeze the left hand, pull back, squeeze the right hand, fan it, squeeze the left hand, squeeze the right hand. And we've now fanned out the paper. I don't have a good light in front of me here. Let's put the light on. And then you simply crack it. And there's my thumb, five, finger under, five, finger under, 15, 20, 25, 30, I'm too slow here, 35, 40, 42. Now I took, I took a minute to do that, but if you saw a real, real printer doing this, it just takes seconds, absolutely seconds. Forty-one. I got it wrong. I got, I got four in one of the groups. So. <laughs> and if you if you're short or over, it's of course it's a money issue. So it's got to be careful. Uh, the five is not a rule. I just did it by five because you can feel it. Let me let me let me slow motion again. You roll them with your thumb, and you can count to five with your thumb. I'm pushing the paper. One, two. I'll do it really slow. Three, four, five break the group, finger in. One, two, three, four, five, thumb in, finger in. You get the idea. So you can actually, you're actually touching each sheet of paper separately. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 39. So I had 42 and 39. <laughs> and I really don't want to try doing all of these at once. If this was Chiharusa, absolutely, she could do this. In they go. Crack, pull, crack, pull, away you go. Boom, 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 boom. I am not going to try and, and, and copy her. But that's the way. So we get 81 sheets.
81. 81 prints. And that's, that'll be the stack I sent him. I must have sent him 81 plus the extra two. Why would I send 81? I'm sure I would have sent him 80 sheets. So have I miscounted here? I'm nervous. It looks like I've miscounted because sending somebody 81 sheets of paper is probably not what I would like to do. Was it 42 or was it 41? Let's, okay, I've split it up again randomly. Let's try it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I'm so slow. 40. There's 42. Did I really break the stack at the same place? Let's do this. Let's take three and call it 45, because I had 42. Let's take three. So that's 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, no, 75, 80, and one. There is indeed 81 sheets of paper there. I was right the first time. Dave has reached the age where he questions himself. I think that happened a very, very, very long time ago. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Sorry, this. Okay, video insert time. Video insert time. First step, wake up my mounted hard drive. Because the video clips are on the mounted hard drive. So these, these are short. This is nothing like an eight minute long clip. These are short. I think the first one is one minute. The second one is maybe two minutes. Nothing. Very, very, very short. Not printmaking. What we've got here, this is the view, a view taken from my printing bench in Ome. This is taken on a nice spring day. Oh, the hard drive isn't waking up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. I thought the hard drive was awake. So, and what it must have been, it must have been a day. Can I pop it back up? How do I get it to start again? How do I show that again? It must have been a day when there had been some rain two or three days before, or, you know, a two or three days of rain. Then suddenly the weather changed. We got blue sky, and yet the river was really, really nice and full of water. It doesn't look like this every day, only after a period of rain. And the water is clean and beautiful. I think we're looking at spring day. The green is just starting to come up. That's where I used to live before I started this Asaksa venture. I, every day of the year, I was surrounded by that scenery. Sometimes snow, sometimes rain, sometimes cold, hot. There's a window upstairs in the Ome workroom, the, in the Kotatsu room upstairs, which looks out through a window, and there is a low-cat tree. Locat, L-O-C-Q-U-A-T. Is that the right word? Is that, I mean, I can spell it, L-O-C. No, there's no C in it. Is this the name of the tree? Locat, there's no C, L-O-Q-U-A-T. And of course, you know what happens? There's a fruit, it bears fruit. So, and the window in front of it is right where I had my computer. There's a window in front of me and the locat tree comes out front there was shoji screens on my window. And if I leave the window open, birds know that I'm there, they're not gonna to come too close. So I did what I did, I got the shoji screen, I cut a round hole in the shoji, put my camera on a tripod right there and closed the screens. So we got this one afternoon. Now you're not gonna see this every day, but this is what I saw one spring morning.
one of them seems to be a kid. And I think that's the kid. Let's play it again. I think the parent comes in first. It's a mejiro, Japanese white eye. Mejiro, white eye, literally. I think what's happening is the parent comes in first, joined by the kid. The parent flies away. The kid tries to eat a bit by himself. Then the parent comes back and feeds him. Let's see if we can see that again. One more time. It's a short clip. One more time. I think this is the parent. Could be wrong. Could be two kids. I don't know. The kid wants food. Parent flies away. Kid's like, okay, if I have to do it myself. And there we go, the parent brings some. I think that's what it is, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> okay, nothing to do with woodblock printmaking, sorry, but there we are. And that hard drive is full of little clips like this. Now someone's saying, what, what did you do with the fruit from this tree? Of course, I took one or two, but the neighbors are all over the place. And I thought, you know, I'd rather leave it for the birds and for this another creature that used to come in the evenings. There's a creature called a hakubishin. And uh, it was a palm, a palm civet used to come in the evenings and eat these things. And it, would, it, had, it had little paws and it would sit there, pick a fruit, peel the stuff off, eat the fruit and throw the, uh, throw the skin down onto the ground. And each morning we would find empty skins all around underneath the tree. It was really, really tasty. The tree is still there. The tree is still growing. It's abandoned. I, know, I guess the birds still come. The civet cat still comes. David doesn't see it anymore. But, uh, there. Anyway, thanks for your uh, uh, whatever. Okay, it's 9 o'clock. We have a big show and tell at 9.15. Before we get to that point, where's my block for the circle? Oh, I understand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it sounds like you didn't know that there was going to be. I, we, were just, we were just watching the video. No, no, no. no. We, it was video corner. Then it's got video corner. You don't know about this. You haven't been here for a little while. We've been having video corner on some of these. So I found it. Can you step a little bit forward? You can't. Welcome back to us. And I have a runny nose, and I think she has a runny nose this morning too. So, uh, so. Yeah, like um, recently I've been walking from uh, Ueno Station to, to uh, mm. Mokohankan every morning and every night. And then, you know, the cold makes my nose... So, uh, instead of taking the train. Oh, this is after you moved. After I moved, yeah. Got you, got you. And so quite recently. So from yeah. Ueno, it would be two subway stops on the Ginza line. So, so, so. But you've been walking. I've been walking. It's just a detour to go to Asakusa Station. Somebody's <laughs> happy to see you, Ayama-san. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nice. I know you. it's been a while. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank you. So, now it's got video time. Did I interrupt something? No, no. We had, we had literally, we just finished watching two small videos. I was just about to start looking at a blog. Perfect time for you to come in and say hello. How have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, had a difficult time this mm, minute, mm, and mm. finally, yeah, I am back. Mm. And, yeah, it's still like I'm a little bit unstable sometimes, but hey, you know, that's your Oh, okay, so okay. half of them are Mrs. Ayano-san and half is Mrs. Casey, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think uh, we need to hide this anymore, but... Um, uh, the reason why I didn't come to the chat for a while was because I wasn't really feeling well um, since like early of October, mm. I guess. I got pregnant. We found out that uh, after after we moved to the new house, and that's when I started having really bad morning sickness. Uh, yeah, I had been feeling mm. really low and sometimes emotionally unstable. Mm. So I wasn't able to come to the chat. Don't need to, yeah. make, don't need to make excuses at all. So, <laughs> I know Sam was in early stages of pregnancy and just didn't want to talk to people and, you know, was well, just so Now yeah. she's perfectly normal. Things are going well? Yeah, it's been uh, 
five months and a few weeks, okay. and the doctor says it's not, the so, baby is of course, now stable. Young, healthy couple. Look at this, and you know exactly what's <laughs> happening in the chat here. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I think that's so famous. I felt a bit sad. I wasn't able to talk about this, of course, you know, so we, we knew, the management so here knew why Anasan was off, but people were asking me, where's Anasan? So thank you very much for okay. Of course, best wishes for this. Do we, do we, what's the date? Uh, June 28th. End of June, okay. Hi. Okay, okay. So, so. And there's interesting things will be happening here. Japan these days is really, really changing the culture quite a lot because of all the lack of population and babies and stuff. Compared to the generation where we had children here, there seems to be sort of a lot more support, support and yeah, stuff like this. You know, yeah. daycare, if that's the way it goes, and stuff like this and mm. things. And things like a maternal leave. Are sort of now becoming the norm instead of you want leave what 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 you know it's become sort of normal now. so I understand will absolutely we don't know what day and when and how it's gonna work I understand will be taking time of course to, to stay home with the uh, I'm not sure before the birth or after the birth we'll work this out as we get closer and stuff like that maybe like a couple of weeks yeah. before the birth yeah, then. maybe and then X months or something after it and uh, Japan is still struggling with this, how to do financial support for these sort of things. And the government is like big talk. Everybody, six months, five months, two years, whatever. Well, the <laughs> government, you know. well what the government is trying to do is to support men. Um, ah, so good. That's yeah. the big push, to get men to take. Men this is where I get really nervous because... Both of these guys work for me, and like they want two years maternal. Yeah, I guess their aim is like fifty percent of men uh, who have like a children, you know, should take a maternity leave. So, so yeah, paternity leave. A paternity, sorry, sorry, paternity so, so, leave. So, so, yeah, so, so, so. I, I don't think yeah. Tara will. But yeah. Well, there's a lot of things in the mix. A couple of things, I know. Of course, we will do whatever we need to do, both both I know, honorably and legally, morally, to do these things. But both of these young people working for us. I understand its job, not 100%, but a very large part of it is, of course, on a computer screen, and then X part of it is dealing with the other people here and packaging and stuff like that. So uh, some question of how much is actual leave and how much is telework and working at home. And then for Taransan, the father here, of course, he normally doesn't come here. He normally works at home. So I don't know how, you know, when he's working at home, does that count as parental leave? Or, or does he have to leave his knife? Don't touch your knife because you're on leave. <laughs> he wants to carve, but the baby's there, you know, so. Yeah, so, so that that's my concern. Mm. Just the, when the baby is uh, old enough or when the kid is old enough mm. to go to kindergarten, mm. we'll, of course, take you know, him or her mm. to mm. kindergarten. So that Are you talking about kinder ho yochen or hoikun? Kindergarten or daycare? They're quite different in Japan, the two things. Hoikun, mm. kana. Mm. I don't know much about mm. Yochen, uh, mm. to be honest, mm. and they come mm. back quite early. Uh, ah, so you mean the, the hours in the yeah, day? Yeah, I, know, I okay. don't know what they do. Yeah, but what happens? Oh, they're completely different. When I had the choice, when we moved to Japan, in my case, my kids were just turned three and just turned one, and we had to decide what to do because it was a long time before school. And we looked at the options, and we definitely didn't choose kindergarten. We chose daycare. And it sounds like we sort of dumped them in daycare. But from our point of view, the kindergarten meant they sat in little chairs in rows and it was like a preschool and they were learning how to read and write. And yeah. it was just like going to freaking school. And I did not want to do that to my kids. I didn't want to send them to school. Play. Yeah. And the daycare centers were playtime. It's the thing like, there was a book written uh, 40 years ago in America. Everything I needed to learn in life, I learned at the daycare center, something like this, you know, <laughs> how to play with your friends, how to take a good nap, or, right. you know, clean up after yourself and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I myself went to a uh, daycare, you know, since, since From I was... From what age? Zero. zero. <laughs> yeah, my mom is a nurse, so, you know, she had this priority that, you mm. know, if you're a nurse or teacher, like, you can put your baby, yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. the baby is... Ah, like, she was zero. given the priority. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So... She took that opportunity. Mm, I'm, mm. I'm glad that they went to, you know, a daycare center. Mm. I think... Mm. What age? How many years were you there? Uh, six years. Oh, so, so five, five or six, six years? years yeah. I see, okay. So yeah. your earliest memories really would be of that kind yeah. of daycare center. Even like yeah. I, I learned crawling uh, in, the, <laughs> in the daycare center. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. From where I sit, it really is, it's that thing about it takes a village. When a kid is in a really good, well-organized daycare center, they're getting care from different adults, from mm. the kids around them. It's not really dumped and left alone. It really is beautifully done here, you know, beautifully done. And to me, that was much more preferable to being isolated at home 
or put into a quasi classroom. So this ne. I worked at the kindergarten too. So yeah, I understand ah, the difference. Both sides. Yeah. This lady knows all this stuff. Well, pros yeah, and so. cons, I guess like they both have benefits. Mm. You know, most kids at uh, at age five or six are not able to speak English normally. But you know, my my kids in in the kindergarten, like the kids I taught in the kindergarten, they can write ah, and they can speak okay. in English. Okay, that was yeah. a bit of a special case. I mean, come on, most yeah. kids in Japanese in Japan don't go to an English speaking kindergarten. This mm. was a different story. Okay, okay, so, so, so. So, I understand. There's lots of experience. The place you worked before coming to Mokohanka was teaching English to sometimes very, very young kids. Okay. Yeah, young people, so. it's fun too, but yeah. not much playtime. Okay, remember, but your kids too. Your kids have an English parent, or right? both. You know, yeah, so. that's controversial. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know like how to, how to. Been there, how to done that. <laughs> okay. I, Daddy, I have lots of advice for you on this one. Whatever. Okay. Well, yeah, I think I will talk to, to the baby in Japanese mostly, and he will in English, but. Of course, Japanese influence will be become more because they're living because, in Japan. Yeah, of course, because they're living in Japan. So yeah, I don't know how to deal with. Like this. we can whatever I can pass on what experience I had, what I thought would happen and what ended up happening were two different things dramatically. What I thought was because the mother was Japanese and spoke to them in Japanese and they spoke to her in Japanese, Daddy was English, spoke to them in English. I thought they would grow up quote basically bilingual, didn't happen. They spoke back to her in Japanese. They spoke back to me in Japanese. I spoke English to them. They spoke back to me in Japanese. I said, okay, whatever. I spoke English to them. They spoke Japanese. They went out to school in Japanese. They spoke to friends in Japanese. So as they became teenagers, their English ability, it was in there, but it was locked behind a door. Mm -hmm. And when they finally moved over to Canada, they said it took them quite some time to open and chip open that door and be able to, to speak in English. They did get there, but it took time, and they never were fluent in English as far as writing goes. So if you do want bilingual kids, you can't just automatically think it's going to happen because daddy yeah. is English. Right. You're going to have to get a little desk and chair out and get some workbooks and stuff like this. Mm. So whatever, this is this <laughs> my experience. No, whatever. So, so. still, bilingual mm. in Japan mm. is kind of special thing that not many people can, can speak two, three, multiple languages at a young age. But like in other countries, like Western countries. I'm, in I've Europe, seen, it's yeah, normal, so many, of course, it's of normal, course, so, of course, yeah. of course. But remember too, one thing, you know, when you say this word bilingual, just being able to chat with somebody, that's not enough. You got to be able to read, there's four different skills, of course. Yeah. Listening, anybody can listen and understand it. Speaking is the next step. Reading is the next one, but writing, if you can't do that. Yeah, so that's why I think uh, kindergarten is not just a bad thing. Like, they, m my kids were able to yeah, yeah, write, yeah. like, full sentences, and that was really amazing. Like, mm, the, their mm, writing skill mm. was much better than, I guess, like, uh, kids at the same age in the U.S., mm, for mm, example. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. In English, you're talking about? In English, in English yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about their Japanese skill, yeah. though. Well, I guess you'll work it out. You know, again, I, I prioritized my children's playtime and socialization. I didn't prioritize education. And it came back to bite them when they were in their late teens. They were, they were good, decent human beings, very well socialized, but their technical skills in the second language were very poor. So and that was due to the way their daddy prioritized their upbringing. So I take the blame for that. I take the credit for it, whatever. So, so. Lesson learned. Yeah. So, do we learn these things too late, whatever. So, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there's been lots of people. Congratulations here. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm sorry about the stress from the time when you didn't want to you know, talk in public. My apologies no, for, for that. No, it wasn't like that. So, it was just most... No, I understand. Everybody understands. Because no problem my talking. emotional, you know, ups and downs. No, and no excuses necessary whatsoever. So if, you know, my emails, like, responses were delayed. <laughs> customers. Sorry, I tried to catch up with, uh, with emails, but I think I was uh, working a little slower than usual. So sorry about that. <laughs> There's something else that's starting to play here, and I can talk about this, okay, it's between me and all. She's completely back to normal now. And she's working every day, just doing things, you know, you're, you're stable and healthy, whatever. But we, we know now that Anna will be taking a break for a while. So who's going to do the job when she's away? Now, I know how to do this job, but it's really not a good idea for Dave to be the only person who can stand in for Anna So we've started, and actually yesterday we started this process. A new person came in yesterday to help learn 
bits and pieces about what different people here are doing. She actually started with Aoyama san, so. And then, um, and then, and then me a little bit you, you know. And, so. uh, yeah, the and I can I can say this while I understand is standing here because it's a thing, you know. She loves likes doing her job. It's her her territory. It's her area. And when other people come in and do a bit of it, like when she went to England for a holiday, or whatever, didn't like this. You know, like don't touch my stuff. Oh, thanks, I understand. Good. Yeah, yeah. So. At this point, you know, you've got your territory and your computer and your job and your communication with that customer and you want to keep doing this yourself, you know. But over this next half a year and year, you have to let go bit by bit and other people have to be doing this. Yeah, you know? my concern is like I say this and she says that and I say this, so that's, that's confusing. Course, but course, if she's going to like take over yep. and then like, you know, keep yep. her own way, that's fine mm. with me. We have no choice. We have to get through yeah. this one way or another. You know, you can't hang on to this. Even it's though not I know, my choice, I know. <laughs> so, so, so. And I get it because I'm the same thing. No, don't touch this. Let me do it. That's one reason why I work here seven days a week because I'm like, I just I want to do this by myself. <laughs> yeah, I can't give a direction when I'm at so the hospital. So, yeah. so we're going to have to try and work on this, and it's really going to depend a lot on the personality of the the young lady who's coming in to maybe do this. We still haven't decided, but we're we're testing this young lady to see if she'll be okay. And if the personality is well and the human relations work well, then the other problems will will be they'll be okay. But if it's somebody who might be a di bit difficult to work with. Then it gets more difficult. We'll see. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's, uh, yeah, your decision. Okay. okay, now I'll tell you what, there's something else. Before you go upstairs, there is something else you can help me with. There is a show and tell today. And what I had told these people earlier in the stream that I can't open the show and tell box on my bench here because it's okay. too big. So can you stay for a couple more minutes? Sure. And can you do the like the cameraman job? Yeah, sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shop lights on. Okay. So we didn't get to our surfer block. We had something much more interesting instead with Amazon visiting. We'll now switch to show and tell. I'll have to, op as I said, I'll have to open the box down there and then I'll bring some of the prints back up. I've got to make my space here. Last thing I want is a pigment cup on the desk. I'll also need to move my light. Okay, take care of yourself for a minute while we do this. I'll bring the prints back to the bench once I have them open. They're waiting for me to drop this one of these days. <laughs> I want to see that too. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> now, the place to keep it because it doesn't stand up. Okay, here's what to do. If you grab the camera here, Amazon, if you just turn it round, zoom, you know, just go back to your normal spot behind there. Okay. And I'll get this out of your way. You can see here where you're at. Gashu, collection of woodblock beauty for woman prints, and the title is 
Meiji no Onna, women of the Meiji period. How do I get in here? I don't want to break it. How do I get in here? Uh, take the, the middle clip out. Is that the one? Yeah. Huh? I don't know what it's called. It's a, it's a Russian name, I think. Matoryoshka. Oh, the, the dolls inside yeah, the dolls. Yeah, yeah. Inside the dolls. Okay, that must be a frame. Which we don't need. This must be the prints. So it would have been a print set with frame. Showa 52. This is post war. Showa 52. Nice shot. Okay. Hey, right, come back up there. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I nice said. Okay, this is actually the first time for me to see this complete set all at once. This is just coming. What Nabe san found this uh, ah, on one so of the shops? This yeah. doesn't come from Yahoo Auctions. She found it through one of her new contacts. And it's the first time I've seen the full set. And it seems, <clears throat> I don't know the full backstory about this, but I have the, 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 the details here. It's a set of, I think it was 30, 30x number of prints. And the plan was to make woodblock print reproductions of various women from the Meiji era, from some Kuchie prints and things like that. They didn't make it all the way. What happened was the series started out as woodblock prints and partway through it switches and the customers started getting insatsubutsu. They're printed. And I, just simply, it, I don't, again, I don't know the people who made it, I don't know the backstory, but it simply must have, uh, must have been not economical to do. Because the prints are, my God, let's have a look, let's start at the top. It must be the wood blocks at the top here. What have we got here? Keshi no Hana, Nandeska, right? And we have some beautiful, beautiful prints at the top of this collection. Now oh, they're glued in. Oh, I can't pick it up and look at it. This is beautifully, beautifully done. How are we going to get this sound sound? There's a... Let me try and do it with the light here. Oh, if you touch that wire, we're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Oh, sorry. You can see what's happening. Yeah. Leave it out for a minute because I want to try and get the emboss, not the emboss, the hair. There, can you see it? Oh, no. You keep. The hair is all done with shomenzuri. There is uh, polishing on the front of the hair. And then if you can zoom in, can we zoom in on the actual hair carving itself? Yes, super, super delicately done. Now, this is not the kind of art that Dave likes. This is from late Meiji or early Taisho. And it was very much a thing to have women shown, uh, what's the word? I know, <clears throat> weak and vulnerable and tubuclear. To, you know, like it was just an awful, awful way to depict women. 
what can I say? No, I want to see normal, vivid, strong people, you know. Right. But this style of art that was popular among this time, it's a Taisho Roman type thing. This is a bit earlier than that, I think. And the women all look so weak and sappy and I'm going to die six weeks from now and all those kind of stuff, you know. And I don't like this one bit, one bit. But the prints, the prints, the prints, the prints are fantastic. Can you catch this on the camera at all? Look at this. Where are we here? Look at this. Well, don't get too close. It gets too blurred. Pull out a little bit, anna -san. Yeah, we'll catch it there. The print has been done with what's called nunome suri, texture to make it look like... Uh, uh, printed on fabric as though it was printed on silk or something. It's not. It's on a piece of washi, but this is a printed uh, replica of that. Can you scroll down, follow my finger down, down some? There's some plants here, and look at this. The gradations, gradations. These guys have gone to town. Every time you see something small on here, there's a gradation. You hold, I'll move the print. If we come across the other side, we'll see the same thing. There's endless gradations everywhere you look. Okay, let's pull out so we can see the whole thing. So very, very, very high class carving and printing. Very, very, very expensive to make. Let's scroll through a couple more. I have a couple of these privately from broken sets, but I've never seen the full set before. Oh, look mm. at this. Get in here, ma'am. Can you zoom in here? Are you okay for time? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where to start? Okay, step one. I just uh, last week I was showing you a video of Dave's magnificent hair carving. Let's uh, let's uh, let's go back to that video. It's the same thing. This is the same kind of carving you saw there. We called it yaige where each of the small hairs comes up and bumps into a larger one. Makeup, look at the hair, the eyes. And then over here on the pattern, this is our famous tie-dye pattern and you have to carve it all without popping out. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Yoshitoshi. He's done a series of 36 women. 32, can I? 30, I thought it was 36. It sank 32 to show. And we've got a little tip. Look at this. The carver got his name in here. Yamamoto was the carver here. The original would have been Meiji 21 or 22. I can't quite see it there. Nice, nice, nice. Watanabe-san has come up with a good find here, an absolutely good find. Can I move on? Hi. This is also Tsukiyoka Yoshitoshi. Well, it's from the same series. It's another one from the same Yoshitoshi series. Carving like machines, just goom, 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 goom. Look at this. The printing is good, you know. Sometimes when prints from this series come up, the carving was magnificent, but sometimes the printing is a bit careless. This one is a good set. Congratulations, what Nabisan. Different carver. I can't read the kanji. Can you read that, Ansan? Okay. If I zoom up, or without zoom up, it would be easier. Pardon me? Yeah, Hori, I know, the carver, Hori. but what's the carver's name? I think it's... Uh, Isamu. Isamu-san. Isamu, yeah. sure. But Isamu is the first name, but it's not a last name, sure. So, isn't it? So, a first name, isn't mm -hmm. it? Morning. Morning. Let's move on, let's get through. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get to the part where we can see some of the ones that are not woodbuck prints. So. <laughs> that maybe so we'll have to budget, skip budget down. To so, so, so. Another Yoshitoshi. Let's skip down. We get these, there's some different artists here. I can't look at all just Yoshitoshi. Here we are. Ikeda. Oh, look at this. Totally, totally, totally different style. Look at this. This is now 20th century. Absolutely. Look at these bold, flat colors. They're getting away from the ukiyo-e, but we still got that dreary, dreary 
vision of what a woman is. I'm just sorry. I really, really, really don't like it. You know? <laughs> As a print, it's fabulous. The work of art is incredible. The topic Dave just struggles with. You know? I don't know the date of the original of this. I'm sorry. This is going a little bit more back in time. They're not really in a sensible order here. Oh, this one is nice again, too. These are made so well. The carving and printing is to die for. The, look at this, the gradations inside the iris. Over here, the registration. Look at this. Are the rabbits on the kimono here? Look at this pinpoint perfect registration. We've got Nuno Mezuri on the uh, on the collar. Beautiful. More the, the the construction here is absolutely <coughs> top class. Top class carving, printing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, this next one is a bit unusual compared to the previous ones. This is a reproduction of an actual Meiji era Kuchie print. And one of the only two or three times in the 20th century that such a rep reproduction was attempted. Let's get in the face here. Actually, to me, the carving here now, the printing, is a little bit not as top class as we just saw a minute ago. The hair is a bit too dark here. Look at this, the carving too. There's a couple of chipped hairs. This is not quite the same level of competence that we saw in the last couple of prints. It's still very, very, very well done. And being a Kuchie, it would have been a, where are we? We're off track. Let's come back away from that light. Here we are, yeah. Being a Kuchie, it's an illustration of a story from the magazine, and I have no idea what the back story is at this point. Okay, let's jump ahead. We're running out of time here, so rather than just go through one by one by one, let me jump ahead now to an area. Here we are. Oh, in fact, oh, there they are. Let's see, they're all in a group. In the woodblock prints, there was one, two, three, four, five more, and then we suddenly jump ahead and all the rest of the prints in the package are no longer carved and printed. All the rest of these prints, these are now uh, copies, reproductions. They're still beautifully made, but they are not woodblock prints anymore. They're done with, yeah, it's half tone. You can see a half tone screen everywhere. They're done with high quality offset printing. And maybe just simply it was too much to ask. A series of this many prints, all done in woodblock. Just it was, I guess it was simply getting too expensive. So it's funny, you know, for me, these are just of no interest to me whatsoever. You know, they're, they're this sort of the same pretty pictures, but because they're not carved and printed, they mean nothing to me, you know. Because clearly, my interest in all of these things is not the art itself. My interest in these things is the beautiful object of the print. There's one particular one. Here, this, this one. One particular one I want to pull out. I was hoping we'd get to this. Chikanobu again. What number seven, I got fooled. When we saw the listing for this on the sale website, we thought, oh, here we go. Unfortunately, there is foxing on this print. No, it's not foxing, it's cherry blossoms. <laughs> Very neat, this is. So. Can we get up to the hair? I can't move it anymore because it's... Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. 
And with a little quibble here, I think they've left the gray line a bit too strong. There's two gray lines here, one coming out this far and one coming this far. And I think those should have been more soft. I think the gray lines shouldn't have been quite so hard. But quibble, 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 you know. Look at inside the eye, look at this. <laughs> two, two levels, so don't, don't come too far, it gets too blurry. Back off a bit. Come on, inside the eyes, you know. How much is too much when you're doing this sort of carving, you know? There's textures everywhere, there's embossments everywhere. And the color, when it needs to be rich and deep, is rich. When it needs to be soft, it's soft. What have we got, fireflies here, have we? I can't find it, just a minute, where am I? Here we are. I think it's a cage of fireflies. I don't think that's done quite very well, but uh, oh, look at this tiny bit of misregistration. Look at this, the gray. Yeah, the gray is here. It's not perfect. These men were only human. <laughs> So let's zoom out. Oops, sorry. So is that how many blocks would it have taken? I'm sorry, I don't know. I know the print like this actually we could clearly count. We could we could count how many impressions, how many pieces of wood would be different because you know some of these might be on the same piece of wood. A lot, a lot, and that would be part of the expense here. The number of wood blocks and the number of impressions is very high. So that's perhaps why this project again was cancelled part way along. I don't know the history. This happened just before I came to Japan. This is 1976 or 7 or 78, somewhere around there. I don't know when. Beautiful set of prints. I'm not sure what will be happening. These have been purchased. Watanabe-san purchased these from Moko Hong Kong. So maybe she will be putting this whole set into the flea market catalog. She's preparing at the moment uh, a matsuri to show Anna-san. So, yes. Do you know what the timetable on that is? Well, her aim is uh, early March. Early March, yeah. okay, not February, early March. Okay. I thought February, okay. but okay. Okay. she said early March. So there's some prints like this that we're buying at the moment. They are being prepared for Watanabe-san's flea market festival, which may be coming in a couple of months from now. So you'll see this then. But this this set will be expensive. I, I know she... Adamo, thank you. I'm sure she had to pay a good a good money for this. We no bargains on this, mm. but uh, there we have it. Okay, Anson, Hontori, thank you for your help here, and thank you for coming back, and and congratulations again on your news. You know, your life is going to change so much, but you know, but I don't think you know how much it's going to change. So, 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 of course, of course. But overall, my my overall, my my God, I'm really glad I had kids. It was an incredible, incredible, incredible experience. The most vivid thing I ever did in my life, ever. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't regret it. So, Come have fun. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. It's Thursday. I'll be back here two more days, almost certainly, for more adjustment carving on the surfer grub. See you then. Let's put the outside camera back up for a second. I'll do that from here, Anasan, no problem. That goes back up. Thank you for visiting. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. See you later. See you on Saturday. Thank you very much. Three, two, one, and down we go.